right? Just do whatever you're told. But that doesn't flesh out with the whole counsel of God. Christians are to have active minds. Jesus was always challenging people to think about what they've been thinking about. It's another way of saying repentance. It's okay to ask questions. But it's the way we ask questions. This word here for questioning carries with it the idea of being quarrelsome. So if you're questioning for the purpose of being quarrelsome, Paul's saying, knock it off. But if you have a legitimate question, please ask. It's a little bit like parenting with my children. You know, when they whine about something, I can't hear them. When they slip, you know, when, when, when my wife and I make an announcement of a decision in the family, of something, we're going to change something or whatever, and then the whining starts. I can't hear them. I mean, we joke about it now. Because they'll whine and whine and whine. And whine. You're not listening to me. And I'm like, oh, I'm sorry, were you saying something? <laughs> Dad. I was like, if you have a legitimate concern, if you would like to come speak to me as an adult, I'd be happy to hear your concerns. And if we need to reevaluate the decision, if we miss something, we'll admit we missed it and we'll make a change. But if you just want to whine, you know, please go to your room because I don't want to hear it. Because it's not pretty. Well, Paul's saying, you know, when you guys do that with each other and the world's watching it, they're going, why do I want to be one of you? And so he's saying, it's okay, to, please, please ask questions. But be an adult about it. And don't do it just to be argumentative because that's not fruitful because it gets us off mission. There are people going to hell without Jesus and we're arguing over what? Right? I think we get the idea. We can go back to our example again. In case any of us thinks that's hard, Jesus went all the way to the cross and he didn't do either of those. He didn't grumble or complain. But he questioned, didn't he? Father, is there any way that this cup could pass? But not my will, your will. And when it was clear that that was, that was the way, okay, Father, my time has come. What a great example for us. And finally, he takes it to a third area, verse 17. Actually, I'm going to back up and start with 16. Hold fast to the word of life, right? So we, we don't just behave this way, but we hold out pure doctrine. We hold fast to the word of God. We believe that it is inspired by God, right? Hold fast to the word of life so that in the day of Christ, I may be proud that I did not run in vain or labor in vain. Even if I am to be poured out as a drink offering upon the sacrificial offering of your faith, I'm glad and rejoice with you all. Likewise, you also should be glad and rejoice with me. It helps here a little bit to understand Old Testament sacrificial systems. I'm going to be very brief. Read Exodus and Leviticus if you want more. <laughs> but oftentimes when people would come to give an offering, there would be a series of offerings. There would be a lamb that would be offered as a sin offering, a burnt offering, and then there would be a grain offering, and then following that would be a drink offering that would be poured out over the sacrifice, wine. Wine. And so Paul is using this imagery that they would understand, those that had a Jewish background, of what, of what this relationship of theirs is like. And so he's commanding them, it's the third command in this section, to rejoice with me. And he is so excited about what is happening. He's so excited about their faithfulness and their commitment. Not, not just not only as you have obeyed, but please keep obeying. He's so excited about that. He uses the word rejoice four times. It doesn't show up in the English. 
In, my, in the ESV, it says, uh, I am glad and rejoice with you, and likewise, you also should be glad and rejoice with me. But the word for glad is the same word for rejoice. So you could say this, I, I rejoice and rejoice with you. You rejoice and rejoice with me. He's like, isn't this exciting? You guys are going through all this suffering and persecution out there, and I'm in prison. Praise God. And I might even die over this. Why is he so excited? Because he's got his passion straight. What is most important to Paul is that the gospel is continuing to go forward into new areas where it is not, and people are being reconciled to God. And if you Philippians, if you live this way, if you're doing these things, I will not have labored in vain. If I get killed here in prison, it will have been worth it if you're living this way. So please, rejoice with me that God is working in you and doing these things. He can hardly contain himself. And his love for them is so deep here. I mean, he's called them beloved. Therefore, my beloved. Because of their commitment to partner with him. See, they've experienced the mind-altering fellowship of the gospel. And they're living for totally different things. And he's saying, I know it's gotten hard, but it's worth it. So keep it up. Lay down your life. Make sure that in the core of your being that the proclamation of the gospel is the single most important reason for living. I mean, just think about that for a moment. God, holy and righteous God, who needs nothing, needs absolutely nothing, who is a just God, who must punish sin. Sin cannot be in his presence, and he must destroy it. He must banish it from his presence. Why? Because that's who he is. He cannot change who he is. He's holy and just and doesn't need us. But out of his passion and his mercy, this same God provided a way to be reconciled with him to where we could have a perfect righteousness equal to his own so that we could not have to spend an eternity in hell but so that we could spend an eternity with him. And he did that for us who don't deserve it, who did nothing to impress him, But because of who he is and his character is, he did it. He found a way for us to be removed from being under his wrath. And we get to live forever in a new heaven and a new earth with a new body, free of sin, forever and ever and ever, living in community with our Jesus. Amen. And I don't know about you, but maybe we ought to tell somebody about that. And if they hear that message and God responds, I don't think they're going to care if you got it perfect or not. Are they? Well, my friends, I guess we're all out of excuses. Paul has shown us what is the most important, what the passion is to be, and wherever we are on the spiritual development pathway, say, great, I see where I am. That was humbling. Thank you, Pastor. Now, what are you going to do with it? Let's start taking steps the right direction. Maybe it's Bible study. Maybe it's serious Bible study. I don't know. I'm sure the Spirit of God is already speaking to you. And just let your small group leader or somebody know what's the next step he wants, and we want to help. And as we do that together, we're going to stand before the Lord Jesus one day, and we will hear the words, well done, good and faithful servant. Pastor Gary uses a great phrase. 
faithfully failing together. (laughs) And if left to ourselves, that's exactly what happens. But the good news, Paul just reminded us, God's doing the work. All right, I think think we've made our point. Let's pray. Father, we want to come before you today and acknowledge that our obedience to you probably has not been what it should be. And so today, God, I give you all of me. I give you all of me. You could have my thoughts, my desires, my love, my purity, my finances, my relationships, my future. God, it is all yours. Help me to live out an obedience the way that you want me to do. Help me to live out this offering to give you all of me. Take my life, God. Pour it out for you. And as that happens, Lord, I can see that will be great cause for great rejoicing. And so I ask for your help. For Jesus' sake. Amen. In response to that humbling and challenging message from God. Men, let's start singing this together, and women, join uh, later, please. All I once held dear, built my life upon all this world.